So I made this short a while back showing you guys how to make a simple custom controller by simply switching the casing between two stock controllers with different colors, which will get you to this result. And some of you guys argued that the outcome is not actually a custom controller. Agree to disagree, because you cannot buy a stock controller with this color combination. However, I got this cute comment from Inkslang saying customize the custom controllers to make them more custom. Well, challenge accepted. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and I will turn this controller into this controller. Well, not exactly this controller, since I've already made this controller and this controller is here as well, it's obvious that I used another controller to make this controller. I bought a used original controller. It was very cheap because the internal components were damaged. But that's okay because I only need it for the case, so if my project doesn't go according to plan, I will not mess up any of my good controllers. I didn't really know where I was going with this project. I wanted to make something different and see what happens, and if I can improve the controller in any way. I knew that I wanted to cut off the handles and go from there. So first thing, I want to take down this, uh, the vibrator supports. And in order to do that, I had to take out the vibrators. Cutting the internal support gave me a guiding line for cutting the handle symmetrically. For cutting I am using a U-frame saw. It has thin wire blades, great for precise cutting. Normally it comes with a table support, and the right way to use it is by holding it like this. After cutting into the case I am using a big flat file to straighten everything and make the cut symmetrical. From my experience a file is way better than using sandpaper because the flat surface of the file makes the adjustments straight and accurate. Every time I cut something from the case I recheck how it looks and the way it feels in my hand to decide my next steps. I think I disassembled and put the controller back together at least 20 times during this project. Cutting small parts and not everything at once allows me to recheck the symmetry from time to time. This is where I realized how important the handles are for a controller, and how leaving the controller with no handlebars is not an option even though I really like the way it looks and how compact a controller like this can be. The handles offer great stability to the controller, so I decided to put them back but not exactly the way they were before. I made them smaller and mounted the right bar on the left side and the left one on the right. This way, the bars sit at a wider angle. This changes a great deal the ergonomy of this custom controller. It might not be the right angle for everyone, but for me it made a huge difference. When I'm playing games I usually stay in a relaxed position like this. You can see how with the custom bars my wrists are more relaxed. If I would have used the desk chair, which I'm not anymore, the original controller would have probably provided a better angle. So it's a matter of choice really, which one is better. Next step is to cover the cut area with a two component air hardening body but also give the controller a new look and feel that hopefully will solve another problem I've been having with the original controller, but more on that later. I split the body in half to make sure that I'm using the same amount on both sides. This is the best chance to make the controller symmetrical. I still want to be able to open the case once I'm done, so I'm going to sculpt the top and bottom parts of the case separately.
After the putty cured, I gave it a rough shaping with the big file. And after that, a finer sanding, but with a 200 or so grit sandpaper. And after that, I ate a whole chocolate and used the aluminium foil to create a separator between the two parts of the casing. Then I did another round of putty shaping magic and redefined the top part of the case. Then some cutting, then some filing, some sanding, some brushing, some cleaning. And this is what the basic shape looks like. Like I said before, there are two reasons for adding more material and making the handles bigger. First one, cover the cutting area and give it a smooth finish. And the second, whenever I'm playing for long periods of time, the fingers that I'm holding the bars with tend to go numb, so I have to take breaks. I don't know if this is only me or if it's a general problem with the PS4 controller. Do you experience the same issue? Please leave me a comment down below. I believe this happens because the handles are too small, forcing me to hold my hands in a closed position and by adding some more material my grip on the handles will be more relaxed. And this makes a big difference. I applied one layer of fine acrylic putty to cover any imperfections and then fine sanded everything with 600-800 grit sandpaper. For the painting process I applied one layer of primer, two coats of paint and two more coats of varnish. And while I'm putting the controller back together for the 20th something time, don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and I will let you know whenever I post a new video. Also. A huge thank you to everyone that supports and encourages me to keep on making videos and go forward with my YouTube journey. It's been three years since I started and it hasn't always been easy. I'm so lucky to be surrounded by wonderful people. You know who you are. And so I thank you for keeping me on track whenever I got stuck, for picking me up whenever I was down, being there for me whenever I needed it. I couldn't have gone so far without each and every one of you. And so I thank you. I have been getting a lot of comments from you guys as well and this is very important because it motivates me to keep on making content. A positive comment goes a long way and so I thank you for your kind words. If you wish to support me to make more videos in the future, you can do so in a few ways. You can leave me a comment, give this video a like, use the super thanks option or become a Patreon using the link in the description. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and thank you all so much for being part of this.